The journey to Bethlehem is going on now at Plum Church from 6 to 8 tonight. Um, it doesn't take two hours. That, that's kind of confusing. It's That's when you can go in between that time frame. But it's like a 20 to 30 minute tour through the different stages of like Mary when she gets announced by the angel. They act it out and, and the prophets read the prophecy. So it's, if you haven't been there, we, we went last night for the first time. I've never been there. They've done it for seven or eight years at least. Um, but it's just up at the Purchase Line Purchase Line Method United Methodist Church right now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that's why I said I don't know if everybody knows what that means or not. <laughs> New announcements. Real quick, um, everyone's mailboxes are getting filled with Christmas cards, so please you know, make sure you take your envelope or everything out of your mailboxes. And if someone's not here and you maybe will be seeing them, it would be appreciative if you would maybe drop off their cards. You have mailboxes. And everybody should have a mailbox. So if you have a mailbox, see that lady right there. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, speak loud enough for you to hear in the back. Oh. <laughs> um, today we're going to light the second cam, uh, candle during Advent. And this candle is called the peace candle. And it's not peace as you might think. This candle represents peace between God and man. And so as we go through this, keep that in mind. We're going to read out of the uh, Bible from Luke, one of my favorite passages. Luke was able to capture things that most other writers left out. He was an amazing evangelist and reporter. Cindy's going to read the scriptures and then I'll comment in the beginning and after each of those uh, scriptures. And in the same region, 
there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. We are caught in a struggle, strife, and sins. Jesus doesn't come to smooth over our conflicts, nor does he come with armed might to force us to lay down our arms. Rather, he comes to the to die for the sins that lie at the heart of the rebellion against God and bring peace between God and us. God chose to start that grand transformation by delivering the message to some poor shepherds out in the pasture. Stop and think about this for a moment. I'm sure that you've heard the Christmas story many, many times, but something really special happened there. In the past, human beings couldn't go directly to God. They had to go through another human being to get to God. And this change took place when Jesus Christ came to earth. Now, we have direct access to God through Jesus Christ, who is part of God. Yeah. You know, for thousands of years, human beings couldn't talk to God. And that was an amazing transformation. Oh, one other thing here, too. You'll notice when God decided to deliver this amazing transition, who did he go to first? The shepherds, the lowest people in the caste who spent their nights out in the fields with animals. And they were the first ones who heard about this huge transformation that was going to take place. But put yourself into their shoes that night. We don't know exactly what time of the night that occurred. Maybe they were sleeping and all of a sudden this bright light burst out above them and there was an angel standing there. How would you feel if you woke up and there was an angel in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. It would be an amazing thing, wouldn't it? But that's not all. All of a sudden, light was everywhere. And the angel <clears throat> delivered that message to those shepherds out in the field. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of the great joy which shall be for all the people. Did you hear that? For the first time, all the people are brought together under God. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that previously. What, 2,300 years ago? Mm -hmm. There was this tremendous change, and now we have access to God ourselves. We can pray to him, and he responds. Now, I've never heard the booming voice of God, but my ask for things, they seem to happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as I thought they would, but changes were made. Mm -hmm. And when I ask forgiveness for my sins, I feel forgiven. Amen. Amen. God communicates with us, and it's not always in the hearing. But if you look around and see what he's done, you can see that this great transformation is wonderful. Um, let me stop here a minute because we missed <laughs> the lighting of the candle. <laughs> Luke's uh, capture of this information 
was so exciting. I, I miss this place. There we go. Okay, is that better? <laughs> For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Isn't it interesting that the Jews at that time, they were captured by the Roman Empire that ruled over all that area. And when the Jews cried out to God for help, he gave them a baby. Jesus Christ. Think about that. Nazareth is where they were living at the time, Joseph and Mary. They had to go all the way to Bethlehem, where Joseph was born, to sign up in the census that uh, Caesar Augustus wanted done so that he knew all of the people he had captured in the world. And it was about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And Mary was pregnant. And far along in the pregnancy. And most of the pictures that I've seen show her riding on the donkey. So she may have walked some and rode the donkey some. I don't know about that. But here she is in the final days of her pregnancy and she has to get from, somehow from Nazareth <coughs> to Bethlehem with Joseph. And we don't know exactly how long after they got to Bethlehem that Christ was born. But that must have been an arduous trip for Mary. And yet, Luke doesn't capture any complaint or anything. It was an amazing journey. Because God wanted to bring peace before, between you and I and him. Yeah. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. We have uh, permission now to communicate directly with God. Do you do that? I was sitting in Sunday school, and from what I heard, it seems to me a lot of people are paying attention to that communication with God. And that's a good thing. We are brothers and sisters together. Amen. And we can communicate with God and pray for one another. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing event that took place 2,200 years ago. Oh, one other point I wanted to make here is that I read about Christ coming and he didn't come for certain reasons but it mentions and Luke captures this that Jesus Christ came to forgive sins and it's that sin against God that brings or takes us away from peace and so in our lives, we have to be very careful that we make sure that we get all the sin out of our lives. And that's easily said, but maybe not so easy to do in our lives because that's the foundation of this rebellion against God, this sin. And so we need to be very careful that we... Uh, are aware of that point. Um, I was 
was uh, talking a little bit earlier about the man that was going to speak to us this morning. And he made this amazing comment, you know, that we had to be very careful not to run over. You know, that we be generous to try to do whatever more that we can. Well, I'm going to try to not to go too much further. <laughs> Let's stand and pray to this great God that we worship. <coughs> Father, forgive us our sins and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from our sins. Empower us to search out your great love for all people and witness the saving grace of serving you. We rejoice in your open communication and the gift of a Savior to help us please you and obey your commandments. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Mike can sing. That's going to be one of the most powerful writings in the Advent people mm -hmm. I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. At this time, for us, you can come forward. We'll wait on you for the morning tithes and offerings.
Rodney, my uh, father-in-law goes in for uh, uh, cancer treatments this week. He's got uh, stage three colon cancer. <laughs> so they're gonna start with a um, regimen of uh, chemo and radiation to, to start attacking that. So it starts this week. Remember to count our prayers. Thank you for the prayers for Remington. Um, he's still battling RSV. He has a real harsh cough and he sleeps a lot, but he did go back to school on Thursday and then slept all night. So just keep him in your prayers that it goes away. I have a phrase. Yeah. My car loan has somehow paid off. By my count, I have five payments left. The bank's called me and said I don't, so yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, who's your banker, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get to know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to praise God because Toby had the RSV and he slept for 12 or more hours and uh, we were all praying that he would recover. Well, now he's running around. <laughs> well, I was asked by a friend of ours to remember Tiffany senior in the prayers lady from the first Line school district is uh, having some serious health issues and is in the hospital and uh, really needs prayer. So we that was in the prayer team, right? Mm -hmm. How are you on the prayer team? Just curious. Wait, if, if you're not on the prayer team and you want on it, of course, see Pastor, okay? <coughs> we'll get you on the prayer team. Remember Michelle Miller, too. Uh, her treatment. She's on watching us today, so remember her. Um... Rodney, if you guys would remember the Tea Garden family, um, my it's my sister's, uh, actually her two boys and and daughter. Um, her ex husband passed away unexpectedly this last week, so.
that your spirit dwells with us. And Lord, for that we are so grateful. Father, you think of those that through this week have may have had great loss. And Lord, we just ask that you would wrap your comforting feathers around them, Lord, just as you promised within the scriptures. Father, we think of those that are suffering from pain. Father, whether it be way or a physical type of pain, or Father, a pain within our broken hearts for some situation that is going on in our life. And Lord, we would just ask your touch on each and every one of those. Father, we gratefully acknowledge the healings that we have experienced, Father, and we would ask for your continued touch on Michelle, on this other young woman, whose name you know, Tiffany. Father, we're just grateful just that you do know them, that you are there with them. They're Emmanuel, they're God in this instance and in these problems that they are facing with their health. Father, for those that are going through cancer treatments, and Lord, we know there are so many. Father, we just ask that you would walk through this time with them, Father, and give them give them a healing touch that can only come through you, whether the doctor served them or not, that your healing is complete, Father, and it gives them the peace that we talked about and the joy that comes with this season. Father, we're so grateful for your love. We are eternally grateful for your love, and we just ask that through this season, you help us to show our gratitude and our love in such a way that others experience it and are drawn close to you. And we ask this all in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Be seated. Thank you, Sister Sandy. And, uh, Sister Sandy mentioned in her prayer about God's love. And our special speaker today requested this special song. And I said to the ladies, we know this song, but we probably haven't sung it for 30 years. <laughs> so, but I think it'll come back to you real quick. And it's about God's love.
turn the service over to our guest speaker, a new stranger. Ken, take it away. Tears. I think as I get older, the part of it, the silver cord has been loosed. <laughs> my heart becomes more tender, and especially with music. But that's just part of it. When I was here last, four weeks ago, number one, your pastor, our pastor, preached a excellent message on the deity of Christ, on the divinity of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I left and went straight to uh, Altoona. I'm going to try to get a little bit of this in because I got a lot to say this morning. <laughs> uh, we had prayed for John Lightner. <clears throat> See you later. I got pictures. He was dying. He was in a coma, and they did not expect him to live. And I think it helped. I wore a black shirt with a white collar because nobody gave me any trouble about that. <laughs> Even under in the ICU, and a friend of mine and his showed up, and his wife, and eventually I prayed and pulled into his, his hand. I thank God that he spared his life. Without going through everything, right now he's in a step down room. And he's Amen. Awake and talking. Amen. That I know of, he still doesn't know the Lord, but God is willing. Amen. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So thank you for praying. Not how I wanted to start this with the sniffles, but it's easier to breathe. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to speak truth to you this morning. And I'm going to try to stick to my my, my redneck plan. I'm not real good. <laughs> I've got, got them all stapled and taped, and hopefully this will go the way that God wants it. I mean, it will. But I really don't want to tell you about who I am, but I'd like to start with where I was born. In a hospital near a little Jewish town in the vicinity of Bethlehem and Nazareth. And believe it or not, my father was a carpenter. And I was baptized by John the Baptist. And I did that for a reason. I didn't give you much information, but what I did give you is true. I was born in kind of a stinky little town called Bristol in Bucks County Hospital. I lived in Levittown, Pennsylvania. L-E-V-I is a, a prefix. Levi, he was one of actually the, of the 12 sons of Israel. Mm -hmm. Actually. Mm -hmm. And about 10 years old, my mother didn't like the drug scene and we moved out of baseball town which I was really getting into and I was upset and how I thank God that on September 20th 1977 by the way so I don't forget I was baptized by John Hawkins Baptist <laughs> preacher in Kerwinsville, Pennsylvania <laughs> but I, I said that to say this a wise man named Solomon said and he put it down in the Proverbs get all the facts of a matter before you make a decision so try not to jump ahead of me and listen to what God has to say through his word and make your decision at the end. But on September 20th, 1977, at Mount Carmel Church, which is now burnt down just outside of these mills, there was a, a missionary, a chalk artist missionary to the merchant seaman, and he drew, I was about 14 years old, he drew a a chalk artist drawing of a, a black ship on the ocean and this anchor 
chain that came out and went down in the water and came up on a, a lighthouse island. But instead of a lighthouse, he drew a picture of a Bible. And as a young person, I was still attracted to color. And at that point in my life, I thought, because Jesus died on the cross, everyone was going to heaven. And for the first time, I understood my sin. I was actually starting to get drunk with my brothers in the basement when my parents were gone and some other things, and it was a critical time. And the, the evangelist preached a message as he drew this, and after the service, he came up to me, and he probably saw lost written all over my face, because I was. He said, would you like to be saved? I said, yes. And we went to the, to the pulpit, and he explained to me that I would be praying to God, not to him, and that he was going to lead me in some a sinner's prayer, and he did. Long story short, I said, amen. And he said, now I would encourage you next Sunday to stand up and tell what happened. And I did. That was one of the hardest things I ever did, to stand in front of my buddies mm -hmm. and say, I accepted Jesus. But when I walked out of that place, I can't explain it other than I felt like someone took this 70-pound backpack off my shoulder because the guilt of sin was gone. Amen. So that's a little bit about me. And I'm going to open up. I'm almost done with my introduction, so thank you for being patient with that. <laughs> I was really grateful to be here in Sunday school this morning and hear the people speak about they really believe in hell and technology and whatnot. But I. This culture shock that we do live in in our society. I heard a story one time, and it was about a, a city slicker from New York City who wanted to go up to upstate New York when he retired. He lived in the city his whole life, never been out. And he took a ride when he retired, and he was going by a dairy farm, and he saw a cow and a farmer behind the cow who was birthing a calf. And he had these spreaders out, and he was trying. And it's an old farmer, and he's watching the man struggle with this calf hanging out. It was breached, just his head was. He finally rolled the window down, and he said, Sir, would you like some help? He said, Yes. By all means, all my sons are out in the field. So he gets the cattle, the calf out. He said, I see your New York City license plate. You're from the city. Yes, sir. I've lived there my whole life. Never been out until today. He said, Wow, but you've never seen anything like this before. No, sir, I have. He said, well, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to apply them. He said, I got one question. How fast was that calf going when he hit that cow? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good observation, mm -hmm. but wrong conclusion. Mm -hmm. Why? He wasn't there, okay? It took about 1,500 years and around 40 men to write this. God was there. Amen. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters and said, let there be light. And there was light. That was the spoken word. We eventually came Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. And it is written, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. He was in the beginning with God. If you fast forward a little bit forward, it says, and the word became a flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is the living word, Jesus. Wasn't long after that, God gave his Holy Spirit at Pentecost. That is the spirit of the word. Finally, 
the Apostle John wrote, inspired by God, like all the other books were, John just penned it down, the last book of the Bible called Revelation. And it was finished. Done. Amen. What's written in here, God meant it to be here, and we're responsible to know what's in here. But like the, what the pastor would uh, say and very well knows, you can't teach everything in this whole Bible in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit. And I want to let you know something ahead of time. I don't know every one of you. I don't know who truly is saved and who is not. Some I do. I heard your voice. Ready to speak. But I'm going to bring this to you like you don't know God. Okay? And I need to, before I actually get into the crux of the message, there's something that God has created us with. Our mindset. And it's called intellect. And we have another part that's called our will or where we make decisions. Mm -hmm. And then the emotions follow. But we gain knowledge, information through our eyes. We can read. We see things. We also gain it through our ear, our hearing. We can hear the word of God spoken, read, or whatever information. We even can, with our eyes closed, we can feel and touch. Well, this is, this is how we gain information. That's our intellect. What I want to focus on this morning is our will. And this, this message is as much, if not more, from me than it is for any of you. But our will is where we take that knowledge and we decide. Sometimes it's very quick. I just snap my fingers. I plan that in my mind. But sometimes it takes a long time and should. But it's where we make our decisions and it's where our desire is. Okay? So keep that, keep that in mind. But if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to Matthew, book of Matthew. And I'm waiting on to see how many people will turn. Some people will turn. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, starting with, if I get there, verse 13 and 14, and then 21 and 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, 14, and then I'm going to go to 21 through 23. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. <laughs> and there are many who go on in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. <coughs> you who practice lawlessness. You who practice lawlessness. I want to define that a little bit before I go on. When I was seven, eight, nine, ten years old, I was part of 
uh, a little league team, Levittown, Pennsylvania. And my dad really wanted me to do well. I remember uh, Levittown won the Little League World Series two years before I was born. And he saw that I practiced and got me a pitching machine and all these things, and, and the coaches did. But we repetitively, repetitively learned to hit the ball and throw the ball and catch the ball over and over and over. This is what God's talking about. Practicing sin. We all sin. We're all sinners. But hopefully, yours isn't a lifestyle. If you get up in the morning and you just, well, what am I going to do? Whatever I feel like. And, and it goes on and on in a sinful way. You need to really pay attention. But anyway, if you also would turn to Jonah, the book of Jonah. And while you're turning, I'm going to let you know, in the Bible, 110 times about is the word, well, formally the word, repent. Repent, repentance, repenting. We're not going to go to all 110 verses. We're going to, <clears throat> we're going to go to three. Three of the men, and that would be Jonah and John the Baptist and Jesus. It's easy to remember that all three start with a J. But Jonah, I'm going to read the first two, two chapters and fairly fast. And I want you to I want you to notice how many times the word down is in this part of the story. Because Jonah was given a message to take to Nineveh. The message was for them to repent, to turn from their wickedness, their evil way. But Jonah hated the Ninevites, and he did not want to go. So the whole book basically is about the message that Jonah was supposed to take. But first he had to deal with his own sin, the sin of hatred, and his own repentance. As I read the book of Jonah, chapter 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. The mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. 
Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleases you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, Out of the belly of the seal I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord. I'm going to stop there. Sin is a very detrimental thing. It is a process. If you don't turn from it and we cry and we keep in it, it ends in destruction. Mm -hmm. In this life and especially in the next. And I, uh, I'm going to keep on going here. This That's called... <laughs> Repentance, Jonah took until he got cleared down and hit rock bottom, if you will, until he turned to God and asked forgiveness. Okay? I'm actually going to skip to, to uh, what Jesus says about repentance. sake of time. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Gospel book of Mark, chapter 1. I'm actually going to start with verse 14. Now after John, that was John the Baptist, was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, and believe, in the gospel. I'm going to stop there for just a little bit. <clears throat> Repent and believe in the gospel. There's two there. That word and in, in the Bible or whatever scripture book, it's a conjunction. A conjunction. And it ties the two together. But I'm going to let you know something. Repentance is not a work of righteousness. Okay? Repentance is a state of mind that you choose to be in. The Bible says that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Okay? It leads you there. And remember the verse, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. repentance. So what is it? It's not a work of righteousness. It's an understanding of repentance towards God. It's an understanding that I have sinned mm -hmm. and that God is not. That my sin is going to lead me to a place called hell that God created 
not for you, not for me, but for Lucifer and his fallen angels that he threw out of heaven because Lucifer wanted God's job, but the God, the job was not available. But Lucifer was thrown out and deceived Eve, but Adam sinned. Okay, and because of Adam's sin, all humanity has been infected with it. We're born into it. Okay, repentance is understanding how good God is. God Amen. brought the fish along. You could say, well, how good is that? The guy almost drowned. Well, he would have drowned without the fish. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that comes to my mind, and I'm, I know I need to just get it out before I, I forget. The, the Jewish people were always seeking a sign. And one day, Jesus said, no sign will be given to this wicked generation except the sign of Jonah. Mm -hmm. As Jonah was three days in the belly of the great fish, so must the Son of Man be three days in the belly of the earth. Amen. How I thank God for the knowledge of our Savior. <laughs> and I'm just going to get right to the end here because I know it's been a, a good service, a long service. I appreciated Mike and uh, his uh, witness there and the reading of the scripture and the story. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give one last little, this is called a scenario. This is not easy for me. I, I enjoy Christmas. I can't wait till all the gifts are bought. That's the, seems to be the, the toughest part for me, finding time and enjoying celebrating our Savior coming to work. Amen. But as a truck driver, I've been driving trucks most of my life. Somewhere over 2 million miles I have in a commercial vehicle. I don't even like to go backwards and think of all these places <laughs> that I've been, like New York City, Philadelphia, Chicago, just not too long ago, for four years. But Imagine we're all going on a shopping trip down to the mall and we're going out the interstate. We got telephones for communication and whatnot and I'm leaving. I'm leaving the path. Beautiful day. It's cool out but the sun's shining. We're going down Interstate 80 and we come to near Kyler Town between Snowshoe and Kyler Town going west on Interstate 80. There's a new viaduct. And that's where the bridge goes way out over a creek. And all of a sudden, I look and see right before this split, or right after, I'm sorry, right after the split in the road, like you're seeing on the screen, the bridge broke. And vehicles went off the bridge. Like in 1989, there was an earthquake in California. I actually saw that the video where cars went down in. Would you want me to call back and tell you? Well, wait a minute. Brother Ken, that might ruin my shopping trip. I'm having a good time. I'm ready to go. And the sun's shining. Don't let me know about that. You wouldn't say that. Yeah, please. I don't want to die. I don't want to go off of that. Okay? There is a place, like I say, God says in his word, God created for Lucifer and his angels, and he does not want you to be there. And there are demons and darkness, and there is no help, no hope of ever getting out, Amen. except for one final little brief time in eternity when God's going to bring everybody up and be judged. I think the scariest words in the whole Bible, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Seems like a lot, but a child can be saved. Amen. Just understanding that Jesus is God's own son, and that we're bad, and that we need him to be saved. I heard this from our pastor 
and I hope you it's kind of like a bridge from four the sermon four weeks ago about the righteousness of Christ. Imagine that on the same shopping trip we turn to avoid this. And I said, hey, wait a minute, I gotta stop at the bank. I gotta make sure I got enough money in my checking account before I overspend my budget. Okay. So I walk in and I asked the teller for my uh, my balance in my checking. <coughs> and I look at her and she looks at me and she says, you got $500 billion in your checking account. <laughs> As I would go, wait a minute, this ain't, this ain't April Fool's Day. <laughs> I'm, laughing, I'm saying, yeah, right. Well, hey, now really, what do I put in there? Oh no. You really got $500 billion. This man yesterday came in and he transferred Amen. From his account to yours. Amen. How thankful I am that God said, even though Ken is this wicked sinner and he has done this and done that, when I see him, I see my only son. It's just as if I have never sinned. Amen. If you don't know him this morning, don't put this off. Amen. You could be dead before you hit your driveway. I'm gonna I'm gonna close with one last thing that's called the Romans Road to Salvation. It's very easy. But Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it is written, But God Amen. commends his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Amen. Christ died for us. Amen. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin <clears throat> is death. That's talking about spiritual death. It's what we've got coming to us for our wickedness. For the wages of sin is death, but... The gift Amen. of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I, I pray that every one of you are saved this morning. But you could be sitting in a pew that you've been warming for 50 years. Amen. If you've never done that publicly, it says it's plural, it's men. Okay, there's no such thing as a secret service Christian. But it's very easy, even the the sacrament of baptism is a type of communication. You stand up, you are identified with Jesus Christ. So, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that way, whether by live stream or here with us physically, contact us through a telephone Amen. or come see us physically to me, the pastor, or any one of these these leaders. Amen. So thank you for, for being patient and listening to God's word. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are thank you, Jesus. Thank you. for who you are. Amen. You are love. You are the epitome of love. Amen. You show that to us through your son Jesus born in a manger the father of your Holy Spirit to a virgin only human that's ever been born like that and he was 100% human as well as 100% God father he grew to a man and lived a life without sin a life of a servant helping people he gave them food he gave them their sight back and their, their legs back and their lives back. He raised people from the dead. He proved who he was. 
And Father, we're grateful and it's humbling to know that it pleased you yes. to crush you yes, on the cross. Prove you. And for these people, oh God, I pray if there's one, even one, who's never been born again, born of, not of the will of the flesh, of the will of man, but of the Spirit of God, I pray they would just make that first step to contact somebody and we can show them how to be saved. So Father, thank you again. It's been good here to worship with these people in this Christmas season and to serve you and how we look forward to your return to this earth as we see the day approaching. Again, thank you for everything that's been said and done. I pray that uh, I interpreted your word correctly. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.